It's not, however, the first book that you've done with a chess theme. No, no, this is the sequel to the first book I uh, had published, which was The Eight. And The Eight is now, well, The Eight, I should say, for those who haven't read it, is about this fabulous gold and silver bejeweled chess set that belonged to Charlemagne. And at the beginning of the book, it was buried for a thousand years, and then it's dug up during the French Revolution and scattered all over the world. And for 200 years, people are running around trying to find it. And the whole plot of the eight is is a huge chess game where all the characters are pieces and pawns and uh, so that book which is now in 37 languages I think and it's just been selling over the last 20 years so the fire for the 20th anniversary of the eight we decided um, it was time that we actually I had to release the sequel which I'd had in my brain uh, since about Oh, 1992, I think it was. And um, but I, I'm glad I waited so long to do it because, as it turns out, the events that I had written about at the very end of the eight, we we learned that the chess set that had we always describe as the chess set that belonged to Charlemagne, but it actually had been invented, created in 775 A.D. I mean, I invented the chess set myself, but it had been created in my imagination by Al Jabir ibn Hayyan, who was a real historic figure who was the father of Islamic alchemy. And the town where he invented it was then the brand new, recently created city of Baghdad. So when I finally got to start writing the book, it was after we had actually gone into Baghdad. So I realized the whole book, it tied everything together, you know, bringing it back to Mesopotamia bringing it back to what for me was the the dawn of literature, you know, because the first uh, epic that we have, the first quest novel, which is what I'm writing, um, was was the Gilgamesh, which was set in Sumer, just along the river. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk a little, a little bit about the, the story itself and, uh, and your central character. Now, how do you, do you pronounce her G or? Yeah, I or Alexandra? Yeah, well, oh. she's Alexandra, and I found out that um, one of uh, Queen Victoria's favorite goddaughters was named Alexandra, and they called her Z, X-I-E, and so I thought that would be a great title. Then I, much later after I finished writing the book, found out that there's a famous Chinese world champion female grandmaster whose name is spelled that way. It's pronounced She in Chinese. Wow. But uh, yeah, I felt it was too late to change it. <laughs> so it's not modeled after her, but uh, oh, just another example of serendipity. But yeah, she, uh, Z or Alexandra, is the daughter of Kat and Solaren, who were, Solaren in the eight was this great Russian grandmaster champion, and uh, and Kat Velis was the was a computer wizard who's sent to uh, Algeria just before the OPEC, OPEC embargo takes place. It's in the 1970s. And so now, 30 years later, they've got this grown daughter who had been a child uh, chess champion, chess prodigy. And I didn't realize, uh, and then she's not uh, permitted, for reasons I cannot divulge right now, uh, to play chess when by the time she grows up because of something that happened in her childhood. And so now she's, now she's become an apprentice master chef at this restaurant I invented. <laughs> in Georgetown on the on the Potomac River in Washington DC um, that's the only four-star open hearth restaurant in the world where they cook over embers and flames and coals and things and she works for this crazy Basque uh, master chef you use a lot of stories and there are stories within stories and the stories it was it was uh, harkening back to a, th a thousand Arabian nights yeah, and, uh, yeah is, is that's that I think that I'm pretty sure that's the oldest uh, example that we have of tales within a tale in storytelling. It became very popular during the French Revolution in novels for people to stop and tell a tale within a tale. But, you know, in the Thousand and One Nights, there's always someone who, uh, you know, three guys are going to be beheaded at dawn, but whoever tells the best tale will get, you know, he won't be beheaded. And so we have all these tales, and then sometimes they tell another tale inside of that tale. And of course, the whole uh, book, which uh, the Sir Richard Francis Burton translation is um, 16 volumes, which I have at home. And uh, the whole book, of course, is her telling the overall uh, overarching story, and then all the different stories within it. 
So when I started with the eight, I really wanted to do that. The purpose of the tale within the tale is to give a clue about something that happened in a different part of the plot that only this eyewitness has uh, been able to tell. So since The Fire is the sequel to The Eight, what I did was I had the children of all the characters in The Eight are here. They've been thrown into this chess game that we saw in The Eight. They have no idea what's going on. So a character will appear from the last book and tell the recount a scene that we've already seen through somebody else's eyes in the previous book. And they'll say, well, I was there too, and here's what happened. So it's like turning the whole book 90 degrees to the left and suddenly seeing a larger picture from somebody else's eyes of other things that were going on in that scene. Um, it's sort of like a detective novel in that respect because you're taking you know, information from each person who witnessed what happened, but it's much more a storytelling method of doing it. So yeah, I really wanted to use that because I thought it was such a great storytelling device. And after all, Scheherazade kept her head for a thousand one nights by telling good stories that way. <laughs> Congratulations, it's a lot of fun. And and for anyone who loves chess, they'll they'll be dot or even Sudoku puzzles. Anybody who's a puzzler, yeah, will get a kick out of it. Oh, thank you. The book is The Fire. It's a novel. I've been speaking with the author Catherine Neville and The Fire, published by Ballantine Books.